we've had to become innovative because it's forced innovation. You know, we, we're trying to keep the doors open and keep the lights on. The Modern Eater has traveled the roads of Colorado for years, bringing you the stories of the men and women who produce and serve our food. Happy people make happy food that make happy customers. From the peach trees in Palisade to the chili farms in Pueblo, the Modern Eater plows through the Rockies to expose the rising costs of food production and the ripple effect of inflation. Supply chain issues, labor shortages, and dwindling profit margins are plaguing small businesses everywhere. Three weeks and 1,500 miles on the road, you get inside access to what Coloradans are doing to stay afloat in order to deliver healthy food and tasty beverages to you and your family. This is the fifth annual The Modern Eater Road Trip. Buckle up, let's go. Wow, this is awesome. is day two of the Modern Eater Road Trip, 17 days on the road, and we're touring Colorado. Farms, ranches, brewers, distillers, small businesses, and here's a good one, Cooper Hall with us, along with my friends and your Chef Jeff Jabot and Chef James Doxon. We're gonna take a look around, Cooper. Thanks for having us here in beautiful Grand Junction, Colorado. Thanks for coming, you came on a good day. All right, the hog in the hand, Market Deli Spirits. You got a lot going on here. Yeah, candy now too. <laughs> got candy going yeah. on. Let's take a look inside and see what's on going in. on. Now, what's really cool about this business, family owned, right, first, first off? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my dad and stepmom opened the candy store on the corner right over there about 10 years ago, and then moved it over here a few years ago, at which point my wife Mary and I moved into the corner and opened the Hog and the Hen, which was a market, deli, and liquor store. And then just a little over a year ago, we moved everything in here. All in one. All right, we're gonna head on inside here. This is what's really cool. Not only do they have, have great artisan products, but a lot of it is locally sourced as well and even locally produced too, Cooper. As much as we can, we keep it local for sure. I mean, with that in mind, we also have stuff from around the world. You know, I mean, this place is packed full of goodies from every corner that we can find, but if it's good and it's local, we've got it. Now, I always admire one of the topics of this road trip is the rising costs of producing food and inflation. It's yep. very tough and this is where the end user comes. So it's up to you to be able to figure out how do I make this stuff still marketable, still for sale so that it actually moves instead of sitting on the shelves, but how do I turn a profit as well? Yeah, it's a challenging game. The good news and I guess the silver lining in the whole thing is it's happening everywhere. It's not just an isolated incident. So I don't feel bad when we have to raise a price here or two or here and there because it's happening across the board. I mean, I go into the big grocery stores and I see it there. I go into shoe stores, I see it. I mean, everything is changing. So we're not unique in that. So I don't feel bad. And if it's good it's stuff and it's well done and it's gonna put some shoes on a small business person's kid's feet, I'm all for it. Yeah. I'll pay those prices. Let's take a look around. All right, so we enter this store. First off, sweet tooth heaven right here. <laughs> right. This is candy, candy land, chocolates, sure. the whole thing. Talk about it. We've got chocolates made here in town. We've got ice cream made here in Colorado. I mean, as much of the local industries that we can support, we try to. Um, and the good thing is it's good stuff. I think the quality is better than if we were to source from, you know, the bigger manufacturers. It's really nice being in, in business with people that we see and work with and are our customers. It's true. I mean, you were just talking about El Porcelino and Bill Miner was yep. here to see you the other day. You work with Watch Artisan Foods. Yep. I got hooked in with you because of James at uh, Carboy, Carboy Winery. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is this is the end result right here. This is where community comes together. And, hey, listen, I'm going to come here each and every time because I know that there's a little piece of the community here in one spot. Yeah. That's People fantastic. come looking for that stuff specifically, and it's nice that we can show them what we've got that's made here in the valley. Here's what I like about this place. Not only, first of all, great vibe, right? When you talk about vibe, you from Vibe uh, Concepts, yeah, Jeff James yeah, Doxon, yeah, yep. you, you, you're all about the vibe, James. This is what you and your group 
always look for to be able to create. 100%, and it starts from the top down. It starts with uh, music, lighting, your your uh, customer service representatives, i.e. your staff and how friendly they are uh, when you come in and you see all these beautiful colors and inviting atmosphere, and then you come to the back and you see something more interesting. I tell you what, as soon as I started walking around, I kept picking up more and more things, man. Jeff and I kept finding, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Let's buy that. I'm here uh, every day and I still find new stuff. Exactly. I love it. I love it. And really, people that appreciate artisan foods and craft types of ingredients, this is the place that you do the, oh, look at that. And I'm doing it right now. Oh, look at that. There's Peach Street Distillers. There's Bill and Dave, uh, Dave Thibodeau's and, and Bill's Distillery right here in Palisade, Colorado. Scott Brewing Company, their other uh, portion as well. The Real Deal. Um, the Real Deal is a Denver company. You've got a lot of great Colorado wines on here. Talk about what you've got going on right there. This would be our local wine section. Here's the ordinary fellow coming out of Palisade. We've got Buckle, which is down in Gunnison. Uh, Joe is making great wines. Uh, ben Parsons also, they're just doing really good stuff. Uh, down here, we've got Colteris, which is one of the more iconic vineyards and winemakers here in the valley. Um, very well-known stuff, and, and they do a really good job. Um, and then kind of the new kid in town, Carboy, I think they've got a good established presence in Denver, but um, newly opened here in Palisade, and uh, we've been hearing great things. Uh, my real reason for bringing them in was people kept asking for mm -hmm. it, and that's sort of what puts things on my radar, is if our customers are asking, then uh, we'll give it a shot. That's a big thing. I mean, when somebody comes in and asks for something by name, you have to take a look at it, but then it goes to, is it a quality product? And, and That's what we check to, is it good? Absolutely. So pass the test, Carboy. Uh, here you are right there. And, and kudos to James of saying, here's a business we do business with. Go check them out, because yeah. that's why we're here today. Nice of him to put us in contact. Yeah, Chef Jeff Jabot with Hesher Catering and, and Food Truck. Chef, you're a, you're a beer guy. I mean, when you're taking your truck around to breweries and setting up shop, you want to pair it with good, delicious beer. You got some good beer selections here as well. But that's what you look at, too, as you're representing brews here today. Absolutely. Uh, the, the selection here is phenomenal. I'm like, you know, I like walking around. I'm just seeing all kinds of cool new stuff I actually never even tried. And you love the distillates, too. Oh, yeah. That's what my would you goal go for sure. I want to have stuff that people haven't seen. Yeah. When, especially with the meats and the cheeses. If people come in and they're like, oh, I know about all this stuff, they're, they're making it up. It's, we deliberately bring in stuff that no one really knows about. Now, Jeff's a world-renowned pit boss, uh, pit master. So I hear. And uh, barbecue is the name of the game there. But meats, I mean, listen, you love meats as well. Oh, yeah. What, what do you, like, can we step over and look yeah. at this meat and cheeses? Tomorrow night we're going to have, I don't know, a, a regional shindig, right, in, in our place we're staying in Fruta, Colorado. But we want to put together just a great meat and cheese board. And we want to look to you guys, the chefs, as the experts on what this is. What should we do to... How, when your customer comes in and looks at all, it could be a little overwhelming, right? Oh, it totally can. Yeah. What, where do you guys go to steer somebody in that direction? We try to help them by making the boards for them. Um, a lot of the stuff people don't really know about, when we take an order, we ask them if they have any likes or dislikes that they want to mention. Most people just say no and let us do our thing. Um, at which point, you know, we'll give everybody anywhere from eight to 10 meats, 10 to 12 cheeses on you know our medium or large boards and we try to just give a good representation of everything across the board as far as meats go um, we've got a good selection of local stuff from Mill Porcellino, Elevation, River Bear uh, we'll try to give anywhere from five or six large format salamis a couple small format salamis and within that give them a good variety of flavors you know something spicy something herby something with some booze in it you know we'll ask them if they're drinking if they've got red wine or white wine you know we've got a saucy zone basque that's got white wine in it, a saucy sans sec that's got red wine in it, and we've got whiskey salami, barley wine. I mean, we can definitely come up with some cool pairings. And to further that, red wine bathed sheep's milk cheese, red wine bathed goat's milk cheese. We've got an Irish cheddar infused with red wine, with Irish porter. So really, whatever you're drinking, we can come up with a good program to pair it with. So. Um, most of the time people just kind of let us go with our yeah. instincts with the cheeses at which point we'll do something hard something soft something fruity something funky um, try to keep it approachable you know unless people want the really you know bold funky stuff then 
Um, we try to keep it safe. We don't want to overpower people, but you know, for the people that do want that stuff, we've got it. And it's interesting, good products really speak for themselves, right? I for mean, sure. that's what you do. But you're working with these great partners like Cheese Importers and Swatch and Il Porcelino and Tender Belly, and you just go on down the line, which I, I mean, I just want to give this whole thing a big, <laughs> right. a big hug because. Oh, you uh, saw the Tender Belly, yeah. I, I mean, that's really what this is all about. Chef, I want you to jump in because there's a lot of good conversation going in right well, there. Absolutely. What I was going to mention too, and we're talking about meat and cheese boards, right? And what goes with meat and cheese boards, but, you know, jams and sauce and stuff and I know uh, Cooper was mentioning some local uh, businesses uh, right over here that that had some good jams and sauces hot sauces um, right here in Palisade that I was really interested in Pear Blossom Farms is one of the local ones making great accoutrement for this kind of stuff Ooh, tell um, us about them Oh, family-owned and operated company they've been doing it for a long time um, they're really known for their hot sauces but they've got great syrups butters like this there's a uh, handful of their jalapeno sauces down here. I saw, correct me it's, if I'm wrong, I saw a vinaigrette and some syrups over yep, there. And they've got vin, so, they've got syrups. So they got a lot of different stuff over and, there. And they're, they're farmers too. They're, make, they're growing the stuff that they use. Yeah, you know, and, and call me crazy, but this is what I really love about food and beverage and the agriculture too. These products right here, this represents the terroir or the taste of that region. You are getting that taste from that region in these bottles. In these, in these jars, mm -hmm. with these meats and cheeses, I mean, that's where we're gonna sit down and when we have a little bit of local wine and some of these local ingredients, woo-wee! <laughs> that's Chef, where it gets going for me. Chef and I have been walking around for a little bit and uh -huh. we're just picking out what we want to put together on a board for our little party. So uh, there's a lot of great things here. Look at these, mustard. Oh, mustard. a couple everything. little ringers too that it's kind of stepping outside of the local stuff, but these that's little fun. sweetie drop peppers are delightful. Delicious. Caper berries are awesome. There's so if somebody says, okay, that's great, Cooper. You have all these things, but it costs a fortune to get a jar of that, a bottle of this. Or the, you'll do some boards for them, right? We will. Yeah. Do you mind if we step back and this to where the production happens and all the magic yeah, happens? I don't know if we're, I don't think we're building any boards right I now. I don't think you're building we, any boards, but you got Mary back there. He'll talk about <laughs> some of the sandwiches you're building too. Excuse us. So cheese and meat boards and Miss Mary. Miss Mary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first thing you guys that struck me, when I walked back here, I was like, wow, I wish every production area was this clean. It's spotless. I mean, I mean, to the point where Cooper was like, hey, I'd really appreciate it if you don't touch our counters or anything like that. I said, yeah, I mean, far They're out. food this, prep surfaces. This is, yeah. the, this is the way we want it. So, hi, Mary, good to see you. Thanks. This is a great loop around the store. What a great family-owned and operated business, but this is where the real work takes place, putting together sandwiches, meat and cheese boards. Can you tell us a little bit about this program? Yeah, I mean, we've got a great staff that dedicates their days to fold meat and cut cheese and make people very happy, and we're pretty busy for lunch every day. Um, we've got some hot and cold sandwiches, um, pretty unique sandwiches that you probably won't see anywhere else. Um, I always like to say, prove it. Will you make us a sandwich? <laughs> sure. Let's make a sandwich. One of my favorites. What's your favorite? Um, roast beef on there and some blue cheese with like a sauce and then horseradish crispy onions and it's on a crunch roll i'm so Please. down yeah All right. okay we're gonna get back here we're gonna get right up in it and Perfect. we're gonna watch you build this delicious sandwich now i have to tell you and chefs you jump in i'm a sandwich guy i love sandwiches <laughs> well, i saw someone eating one outside and i was like oh that's a nice looking <laughs> well, that sandwich looks yeah we'll send you with some food today so when you're talking sandwiches What's the number one thing that you look for, James Doxon, I want to get this from you. What's the number one thing that you look for in a perfectly built sandwich for you? Because it's all subjective. Everybody's sandwich is subjective. Absolutely. So perfectly built sandwich starts with the bread, right? You got to have good bread. Uh, and then when you're layering Central. it, you got to layer it in a way that eats in your mouth the correct way. You know, you're hitting the right flavors. So at funny the you right. say that. I love what? it. <laughs> and and then and then of course seasoning matters, right? You uh -huh. know, if you're salting the tomatoes or you know uh, having the right sauce that has enough seasoning, things Come like that. Come over here and watch her make this sandwich. I can't wait. I <laughs> I am so excited to have this sandwich. So give us uh, the play by play, James. What what kind of bread we got going on? That's the, right. It's the crunch roll coming out of Denver. Harvest Moon. Harvest, 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 Harvest Moon. Moon. Yep, it's a, they call it the Denver crunch roll. I love that. And uh, then we've got we call it blue chiz. Uh, we make a couple kinds of chiz here. It's like house made cheese whiz essentially um, 
love that. A little nuke in Beautiful. the microwave. Yeah, how do you make that? How do you make that blue chiz? We start off with ranch seasoning, and we make a ranch mayo. So it's, it's we make the ranch seasoning here. Wow. Um, and then that ranch mayo becomes a few things. I like to multitask our ingredients. So mm -hmm. everything here does double or triple Cross duty over. as much as possible. Cross utilization. Uh, so the ranch mayo is the base for a handful of things. Um, it's essentially making a ranch dressing just minus the milk or cream. You know, we don't thin it out. So it's got the viscosity of mayo. Yeah. And then that just becomes a base, kind of like a base sauce. Uh, that's our tuna mix. And we, you know, add capers and pickled red onion and Absolutely. all the goods to the tuna mix. Um, rip it in a food processor with blue cheese crumbles, which then becomes the blue cheese, which is just kind of like a spreadable blue cheese sauce. Love that. And then it also becomes branch, which is our barbecue ranch. Perfect. So I love it. Cross utilization yeah, is so important right now with the war on inflation. In. Absolutely. It right. is hugely right. important. So the fact that you're making those base ingredients and kind of cross utilizing and being able to change that flavor profile by adding different things yeah. to it is, is Everything does is double huge. or triple duty here for them. So then with the crunch roll, with the, it's a caramelized onion balsamic jam that's got a little bit of heat to it. Uh, the sweetness from the onions and some red pepper flake kind of give it a little balance so it's not just a sweet. Um, and then we take the beef and dunk it into a jus, which just kind of warms it up and loosens it up a little bit. Um, it's, a, it's river bear roast beef, which is medium rare. Um, by bringing it for 20 seconds in the well here, it kind of it brings it up to about medium. Um, and then we lay it down on the sandwich and top it off with a creamy horseradish and crispy onions. One of the things most of our sandwiches has in common is a little bit of a crunchy bit, a little texture. Um, if you look over there to the left on top of the line, there's uh, manchego chips, slivered almonds, goldfish. We put the goldfish on our tuna sandwich, which is plenty of fish. Um, adds a little crunch to it. Uh, Shoesing potatoes, crispy onions, just anything's gonna have a little bit of a crunch to it, just texture element. That's very smart. Sweet. I think our viewers are having a food gasm right about now. <laughs> this was a, this sandwich looks amazing. I need my two mouths over here, yeah. Jeff. Oh yeah, I'm ready for that. All right. One thing Jeff. we were very mindful of when we opened this deli was speed. There's a lot of good restaurants on this street. Um, we needed to be quick. We want to be able to cater to the people that have a half hour lunch break. You know, they can come in and get their sandwich in two or three minutes and then have the rest of the time to enjoy. All right, I need a couple pictures for the Grams boys. Oh, cheers. All right, show me the inside of that, baby. Squeeze it, make it look good. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. That looks so good. All right. All right, cheers. Cheers, buddy. Mm. Can you hear the crunch, the crunch? in the mic? <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the mic, I want the sandwich. Wow. What do you think, Chef? Awesome. awesome. Perfect. Love this. All right, that's great. Um, right I mean, listen, you guys knocked it out of the park. I'd say good luck, but it's continued success at this point on. Thank you. I mean, what a great family-owned business. You guys are doing it right. You should be really pr proud. <laughs> Thanks. That's Cooper and Mary right there. <laughs> Thanks again for showing us around. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. All right, thank the you. Modern Eater Show. This is day two of our 17 day road trip. I know we look a little fresh right now. We're going to look pretty ragged down the road. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate that and follow all of our social media at The Modern Eater. But for now, for Mary, for Cooper, for Chef Jeff Jabot, for Chef James Doxon, I'm Greg Hollenbach, and Nick behind the camera. We're going to kick that rock on down the road, and we'll see you coming up here at Talbot Farms on The Modern Eater Show.